Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be the opposite side of the bracket of Hasu League BSL Season 13. Group B, Zakram going up against Jedi 1. Upper right-hand corner, we have Zakram as the purple Protoss. Bottom right-hand corner, we have Jedi 1 as the green Protoss. This is again on Revolver, and I have not caught a PvP on Revolver yet. I'm trying to think of when I would have had an opportunity to that I'll let you guys know. It's like, oh, you didn't catch this match slacking on his... Uh, Commentator duties to watch literally every single StarCraft game out there. I try my best, guys, but I can't catch everything. But yeah, I'm very interested to see PvP on this match in particular on this map in particular. Because as I was saying, Revolver, because of that natural expansion and the disruption with those eggs, it just makes early busts a little bit more difficult. I feel like Reavers actually might end up being a little stronger because of the ramps after the two bases. So Reaver High Templar are even stronger. So I feel like there's a way that, you, and oftentimes that's what general PvP is about, is, is like, okay, can you survive and sneak your way up to uh, getting an advantage of your opponent with either Psystorm or something along those lines. But I feel like Reavers, because of, uh, yeah, just the ramps and basically any sort of splash damage or the ramps is going to be even stronger. I'm kind of interested to see what happens because in PvP, I feel like in the other matchups, it's like you kind of want to stick to the exterior almost and depending on your troop composition and engagement. In PvP, if you have like a, if you've got a large gateway man style army, you might want to like engage the interior. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. There's a lot of thoughts that are running through my head and we're just going to have to see how the matches go. It looks like we do see a two gate opener that's scouted right away from Zakram from Jedi 1. So he's going to open up with some aggression. Is he going to see it? Okay, there's Zakram, like, moving to the corner, in fact, seeing it. Zakram, opposite side, has opened up a gateway. He's plopped down a second gateway to follow this up. So if Jedi 1 is going to win this match, he's going to need to do it through pure Zealot Micro. And just shoving his way up that ramp. This is a wider ramp to start. I didn't think about that aspect either. So yes, you have yes, you have the, the Lurker Eggs on the front. But it's also a wider ramp in PvP. So I wouldn't be shocked to see just two gate openers across the board on this map. Because, yeah, even if you can't engage these Zealots, you can start working on those eggs and create a little bit of additional threat there. Jedi 1 getting his own scouting information. He's following this up with an Assimilator, no Assimilator yet, opposite side from Zakram. And the Zealots actually, initially, at least one Zealot's going to go ahead and break off and start working towards that probe. It's going to block that front door. Otherwise, looks like we have a Zealot in position to go ahead and create a blockade. Otherwise, Zakram grabbing his own gas... Zakram with a slight probe lead, but a little bit behind on the gas timing. Not significant, uh, not significant enough. Can't say significant for a second there. Not significant enough where it's going to create any sort of advantage. But Zakram starting to press out with his three zealots. Jedi one on the low ground. Looked like for a moment he was saving minerals to potentially use, but these two zealots. Staggered with their brethren. Might end up in a scenario where they're outnumbered. Backing out. And again, this is where those eggs... Playing an issue. But all of a sudden, Zakram able to get a three-on-one initiation. This pro... Is he still going to try to drop the Nexus behind this? Because of the closer reinforcement point? Two Zealots versus one versus two Zealots and one. Re-engaging. Zakram with some nice micro. And again, some nice micro. But he still looks like holding resources... To try to get that additional Nexus up. He has that cybernetic score. No Dragoon as of yet. And the two Zealots actually able to walk in the main. So now let's see how much damage Zakram can field with these Zealots. Every probe kill counts. One probe kill there. Zakram still with the two probe lead behind this as he is producing Dragoon. So he is going to be able to put Jedi 1 in the dark. But Jedi 1, very boldly, despite all this harassment... Gonna wipe these two Zealots out and grab his own natural expansion. Manor pile on there as well, which I think I missed being placed a while ago. It doesn't look like it pinned any probes in, but it looks like it did. Looks like it did manage to disrupt at least the three mineral patches for a time. So now three Zealots on the ground for Jedi 1. He's building two Dragoons behind this. The probe scout has been killed in the space. Zakram grabbing his own Nexus. This Nexus is going to come up later, but he's got a huge probe lead currently. 16 to 22. 
Army count advantage to Jedi 1, at least momentarily. I don't think he's going to go for any attack just because the in the distance traversed, I don't know that he'd end up with an advantage. Also, no range being upgraded, whereas Akram's range already finished. <clears throat> His nexus is up, so let's see if he can, producing out of two nexus, two nexi, two nexus, catch up. Zealot also kind of sneaking out, going to go ahead and scout additional corners, just make sure there's no proxy tech. Always like it when players yeah, use a latent unit to go ahead and just keep an eye out. Third gateway being plopped down from Zakram. No robotics facility yet. And it looks like he's he's pocketing some resources. I'm wondering if he's just going to go try to sneak a third. We'll have to see if he's just saving to get uh, for the round of Dragoons. Looks like it was just to save for a round of Dragoons. Two gateways continue to produce. It looks like range about halfway finished. So Zakram currently has the advantage of range. He's still five probes up as his Nexus is coming online. Slightly economically beh uh, behind as far as just not having that second base saturated as rapidly. One Dragoon going to eat a volley of fire as it was going up and getting too aggressive against this probe scout. And a single pylon being placed at that three o'clock base just in case Reavers were floating that direction. Fourth gateway in a robotic facility being placed from Zakram. Natural expansion now saturated. So after all of the early game shenanigans, Zakram taking a sizable probe count lead is even in supply otherwise. Still just two gateways for Jedi 1. He's grabbing a robotics facility. So the ground troop army count is going to be an advantage to Zakram. Also, I feel like the tech advantage in Zakram's favor as well because he's already got that robo up. He's already got this observatory uh, planting. So right now, all advantages to Zakram. However, both players playing defensively at this stage. Third gateway going down for Jedi. Now, the question is for the follow-up is, is right now Zakram with both the, it looks like that probe gap is closed a little bit, but with the general economic advantage with these gateways producing one additional unit, that means to remain ahead overall, what he's going to want to do is be aggressive compared to these three gates. He doesn't have that information yet because he doesn't have that scouting. It looks like this pylon is going to go down, so minor losses here. A pylon being planted otherwise. The Dragoon's starting to filter out, and this is kind of the problem on Revolver, right? Is Dragoons are hard to manage at large, but with those eggs, can be troublesome otherwise. Jedi 1 might doesn't end up losing the Dragoons, but is going to lose his own pylon as Akram moving out to go ahead and defend this forward, I, I want to call that like a forward spotting observatory, something like that. A fifth gateway being plopped down, and that also puts Jedi 1 in the red, so more delays as well. And Observer is going to be out there momentarily. But both players again playing just more defensively. Second Assimilator being grabbed. No, uh, Second Assimilator has already been up. Forge is there for level 1 weapons. And so the difference here, it looks like, is I'm going to give Zakram a big lead here because Jedi 1 just now grabbing additional gateways. He's behind in tech otherwise. And he's going to be behind as far as just how heavy these units are able to hit because he's that Forge getting level 1 weapons is going to be well ahead. Upon realizing that Observer's on the front, nice reaction from Zakram to go ahead and scout. He's like, okay, your Observer's there. That means I can go ahead and sneak in and scout. He's going to notice, okay, he doesn't know the timing of these five gateways, unfortunately. But he sees the five gateways here. Forge and Citadel of Adun being warped in the main. This Observer looks like it's going to get picked off, but it did its job. Supply count lead... In Jedi 1's favor, somehow in the midst of this, a cannon being warped in that corner. Interesting play. Zakram perhaps thinking there was a, I guess, just going to mitigate potential drops, at least at the natural expansion. And a six gateway being placed behind this. So both players playing a very macro-oriented game. Nice job. Actually, I was I'm thinking about this. So oftentimes, Protoss... They have to play off the information that they're able to glean through their observers. And I feel like there's no matchup where that's more the case than PvP. And I feel like so much of the PvP game, actually, now that I think about it, is in the observer fight. Jedi 1 starting to move out with the Zealots and grouping up. This might end up, despite having about an equivalent army, this might give an advantage. Because right now, Zakram's somewhat split. And again, because these eggs are in position, Zakram might not be able to 
group up to respond. I think the observer trailing this observer, he was thinking of trying to get a fight. Unfortunately, that's leaving him with a split army to engage Jedi's one cohesive army, although he might get a high ground advantage right here. The Zelt's starting to flood in. Yeah, he's just got half his army, just getting caught out of position, unfortunately. The Dragoon's engaging from the south. Let's see who gets the better grouping of this. Jedi one, I think with more Dragoons to the north, but he's got more reinforcements coming from. He's going to have the, the low ground to high ground advantage from what's coming from the south, though. And it is the OK Corral right here with just phaser fire at him, just obliterating every which way. And I think with the closer reinforcement point, Zakram should be OK. So losing more Dragoons, he still should be able to reinforce. He's trying to grab that 12 o'clock Nexus behind this. Still two Dragoons left, but it is not enough to punch through. And more Zealots are starting to run down those Dragoons on the front. Six o'clock Nexus is already up for Jedi One. So despite all of the exchanges, Jedi One keeping up with this macro. His third is up much more rapidly and saturated much more rapidly. So he's going to turn around with an overall economic advantage. Some cannons being dropped preventatively from Zakram upon losing the entirety of his army. I'm not sure if he, he has this third base scouted. But right now it looks like Jedi One ahead mostly... Because of uh, just flat macro. Back up to 10 probe lead. Seventh gateway being grabbed by Zachram behind. This looks like... I take that back. That is going to be two additional gateways to go up to eight. He does have that Templar archives. Starting to filter in some high Templar behind this. Opposite side of the map. Looks like we already had eight. Looks like nine gateways up. Templar archives is there. Level one weapons online. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like Zachram's going to be able to press a fight in that window where he has this level one weapons lead. Because level one weapons finishing right about now. Third is up. Dark Temple are starting to wander about. I like the cannons there defensively now, actually. For Jedi One. This does give him a degree of map control in the middle, just in case armies are starting to push out that direction. This is kind of a question I'm going to ask the players at large is, do you lead these... Do you leave these eggs in place to more easily defend that natural and make it more difficult for your opponent to kind of filter in? Or do you take them down so it's easier for your troops to get out to the middle of the map? I guess it's situational. It's always situational, but interesting to know. Some Archons in the group trooping to the 6 o'clock. Sizable supply lead for Jedi 1. Getting some Archons in his composition as well. And as things stand, Jedi One starting to climb to a lead, feeling comfortable enough to go ahead and grab yet another Nexus. And a Dark Templar quickly wiping out that probe that was trying to take out, or trying to grab that 11 o'clock base for Jedi One on the opposite corner. Zakram, this might be a trigger for him to go ahead and get aggressive. Looks like he's trying to pick up... He does manage to pick up that Observer overhead. He's going to be running into an army. Maybe if he can catch the army out of position, he can sneak back into this. But as this stands, it looks like this base is going to end up in position well ahead. And we have a Dark Archon in the midst of this. Was Maelstrom upgraded and I missed it? A Dark Archon here as well. It's exposed to the front, so it's at least been spotted. And Zachram doing... A bit of an engagement, repositioning to the right. And feedback, oof. Feedback able to take out one of the High Templar. That is huge. I think this is the first time in Hasu League I have seen a Dark Archon fielded with feedback. That is, that is actually crazy. And actually getting the Dark Archon there, if you can hit the High Templar, that is huge. Because getting rid of Psystorm... And having your own Archons out in the front, that is a lot of beef. Advantageous beef out on the front. But the question is, is can you hit those High Templar before they're able to drop the storms? This puts a lot of pressure on Zachram, though, to not wait for those perfect storm opportunities. Zachram repositioning behind in supply. Does have High Templar. 
but will he be able to use them? And for a second there, I was going to say that Dark Archon's too far forward, but actually putting that Dark Archon forward, you can bait. Is he going to be able to get... Gets another one. And now with two of them. So only one Eye Templar in a bit of a light Psy Storm as well. So I think Jedi won with both the supply lead. I think the upgrades are now in his uh, favor. Is it, Never mind. Upgrades actually in Zachram's favor. I don't think it's going to make a difference though because he's got... He's working against a high ground advantage with this army split and all the way around getting engaged upon. Maybe just flabbergasted. Losing all of those High Templar as well. So Jedi 1 just running him over and that might be GG right there. He's going to go ahead and try to take that 12 o'clock base. The Dark Templar spotting it. Sneaky snake. In that corner. And Jedi 1 can just start running over bases at this stage. 60 supply up. All sorts of units. A lot of gateways in the background just humming. Probe lead, economic lead. Dark Templar moved up late. So it looks like that Nexus was canceled. But upon that cancellation, I don't know that he's going to be able to defend this 12 o'clock base either. So everything going in Jedi 1's favor. Three kills on that Dark Archon. High level play right there. I like seeing it. I like seeing it. And Zachram's 12 o'clock base being breached. A lot of Dragoons left here. They don't even care about the Zelts coming in from the right. Unfortunately, if they... They can kind of split off. And yeah, there's GG from Zakram. They could just split off and kill reinforcements if they're coming from the right as well. Hope you guys enjoyed it. From this point, Zakram actually had to give a walkover for the uh, match following. Just FYI. But I'm looking forward to seeing Zakram in future BSLs. I have the winner's league... I have the winner's replay. Fortunately, knowing that with the walkover... We'll know who advanced and then also in what position. But hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.